Well, I'd like to welcome everyone back to my YouTube channel. Uh, we got some nice comments uh, on the wind chimes that we made uh, uh, on the last video. So I thought I'd do another one. This one's going to be a little more difficult. This one will require uh, the capability of having a kiln so you can do some fused glass. What we're going to do, we're going to do the same exact uh, layout as we did before. So we're going to start at the top here with an inch and a quarter, an inch and three quarter. In here, we're going to put an inch and a quarter. We're going to do two and a half, an inch, an inch and a quarter, one and three quarter, and one and a quarter. So we need 16 of the one and a quarters. We need eight of the one and three quarter. We need three of the two and a half and one of the three inch. And in the middle of it, what we're going to do, we're going to fire what they call a pinwheel. Uh, my wife is a quilter, and that's one of the patterns they use a lot. So I'll show you what it is. Basically, it's a square uh, piece of glass cut into a triangle, and you put four of them together to create the pinwheel effect. So we'll push these out of the way. And you're probably already saying to yourself, well, if this is going to be a, a wind chime, and it's all clear. It's not going to look too great. But I'll show you what we're going to do. So we're going to take this first one here, and uh, we'll make the pinwheel out of this. So this, this one here is going to sit in here just like this. Get all the pieces in here right. That one's going to go right like that. A little lining up to do here. This one goes right here like this. And this one goes right here like this. Now, Right in the middle, there's a product that they make for fusing. It's called rods. They come in all kinds of different size circles. This one's quarter inch. And right in the middle here, we're going to put this little guy right there, right in the middle. That'll take and cover that up. And when we fire these, we're going to fire these with what they call a contour fuse. It won't go completely flat. It'll have some, some depth to it. So that'll be how we make this. So uh, if you wanted to do it uh, with, with the colored glass like this, uh, that would be uh, that would be very very pretty, but uh, what we're going to do we're going to actually make our own colored glass, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're going to basically do that with a clear sheet of two mil glass. This is the the base is three mil, so this is two mil. Uh, this is code uh, ninety six glass, so the code is for the uh, the coefficient of expansion. So. That, that they all match up and go together. So we're going to take this and we're going to use a, a, a glass line product that they used for, uh, for, for painting on glass. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do it. We're basically going to run a strip of paint on it. We're just going to pick it up and let it roll around as we move this around. So uh, I'll get set up to do that. And when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll get started on uh, making our own glass. Uh, the squares or the triangles that you cut here are just half of the distance of whatever your square is. So, for instance, this is our three inch square. So, these are one and a half inch squares. So they're one and a half inches across this area right here. So, you don't get confused on, well, how am I going to make these so that they fit properly? So, this one here would use a one and a half inch square uh, cut on a triangle, which makes the long side uh, fill up the corners. So, we'll be back in a second. I'm going to. Uh, uh, get a, uh, a plastic sheet to put down because the uh, uh, the painting can get a little messy uh, the way we're going to do it. Uh, this uh, glass line product, you can use it with a brush. You can just squirt it on and roll it around like we're going to do. Uh, you can uh, put it on with a paintbrush. Uh, you can airbrush it. You can use uh, all kinds of different ways to do. It's uh, thin with water, so it uh, works really well. Uh, I will put a pair of gloves on it so it's not to get too messy, but you could do it without gloves. So we'll be back in a minute, and I'll get this all set up with my plastic sheet, and I'll get the, uh, the glass line products out, and I'll get them. You need to shake them up really good before you use them, and then we'll go ahead from there. So the assembly of this, after we get these squares all made, the assembly of this, I'm going to refer you back to the first wind chimes that we, 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 put, we posted, and that'll show you how to, how to drill the holes, how to make the hanger, and how to assemble these all together to make your wind chimes rather than go through it would be a redundant to just go over and do the exact same thing again so you can refer back to that one and if you haven't had a chance maybe take a look at that first one um, see how it went together and then it's just clear all right it's just it's just regular glass uh, uh, fired 
and uh, put together as a wind chime. This one here is going to be a little more complicated. So we'll be back in a minute. We'll get set up to uh, make our own glass. All right, we're back. Well, here's the products we're going to use. So these are all the different colors we're going to put on this glass. And we're going to put them on just at random. We're going to take them. We're going to take the glass and we're going to tilt it around to uh, to create an effect. And then we'll go ahead and fire it. But before we do that, we're going to use the black one. And I have some special little tips here that are go for all the way from super fine up to about a sixteenth of an inch in diameter as far as making a line. And what we're going to do, we're going to take on the on the first layer of our paint. We're going to take and we're going to just make a bunch of swiggles all over it. And then we're going to go ahead and start to lay down some colors. Uh, in between the colors, I'm just going to use a standard hair dryer and dry them to kind of expedite the drying, so that we can. I don't want to put the. I don't want to put each color on uh, over the top of another one until it has set set up. So, like at the top here, I'll start maybe with a with some orange, a green, a yellow, and a blue, and just let them run down and run around. And then I'll take and I'll dry those real good, and then. We'll move down and we'll put another section in. So uh, we can do anything we want to with this as we move along. So this is kind of a fun project to do, but you do have to have the kiln to uh, to fire this. So uh, uh, I'll push this stuff out of the way here. You notice I've got a little sheet down here. Uh, I have gloves on. This is not toxic. It's water base. So, but uh, this gets a little bit messy. So we'll get these colors out of the way here. And I'm going to take this one right here. This has the ultra fine tip on it. You, you won't even be able to see the hole in it. And I'm going to put the black here. Be sure to shake these up real good. And if you need to thin them, you can thin them with water. I'm going to take the uh, cap off here. And these soft screw onto the top here. Like that. Take a paper towel here and kind of get a squeeze the bottle just a little bit and get it started so that you can get so you can get kind of going here like that. And then you bring in your glass. I've got just a little block of wood here. It's been used for all kinds of different things. I want to get it up off the uh, working surface so that I can pick it up easily to make it tilt around. So anyway, we're going to start anywhere on here. Uh, you can make any kind of design you want. We're just going to do a lot of swiggles. Take and get the point here. And we're just going to start right here and we're just going to go like this. And you can do anything you want to with this. When it stops like that, sometimes what's happened is that the tip is, gets plugged up. And of course, as you go to the bigger tips, uh, that that happens a lot less. So this is a just take your pin here, and you take and you take and feed it back in here. It's going to be a little trying when you when the old eyes get a little bit older. There we go. Just push it down in there and run it up down a couple of times. Usually the reason it gets plugged up is that the the glass paint is a little too thick. So after you run it through there again, give it a try here and see if that loosens it up. Well, that one still wants to stay plugged up. So let's go, let's go to the next size up and uh, we'll get a little bit, a little bit bigger uh, tip on it. This one here, let's give that a try. All right, here we go. So we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to make these little swiggles just anywhere we want here. Remember, after we get this fired, we're going to cut this sheet all up into little squares. So we're going to make all kinds of little swiggles on here. So these little swiggles will show up <clears throat> on our glass in all different areas in all different parts of our project. All right, that's good for that. We'll go ahead and go offline. I'll clear these tips up. I'm going to take my hair dryer and dry this real quick. And then we'll come back and we'll put some color on it. Okay, well, I took the hair dryer and I dried our, our black now. So uh, 
this is what it looks like. This will be the this will be the front side of it here. So now we're going to put some color on it, and the color we're just going to do it random. Let's we'll start. Let's start with this yellow one here. I'm going to shake it up real good. And I'm going to just take it like this. Take it like that. I'm going to just take and put it down here. Run it off the edge. You could build a little dam around this if you wanted to. And I'm just going to let this go right on down there. If you tap it just a little bit, we'll let it go back. Just let it go ahead and flow here. Like I say, we don't really care where it goes. All right, we're going to take a little bit more, a little bit more right here. Fill this area in right here. And then let's take and we'll tilt that again. We'll just take and let it roll it down. So this is kind of fun. You can just do anything you want to with it here. This came off on the back side here. We can uh, we can wipe that off or just leave it on there, and we, we won't fire it. When we fire it, we'll have to clean that up. So, okay. So let's make another. Uh, let's take a. Let's take this cobalt. Well, let's do the turquoise one here. And we'll take and put it on here like this. I'm going to take and tilt it up here a little bit to see if I can get it to run down the edge there. That edge will be trimmed trimmed off of there because the kiln will make it go different shapes. Here again, we're just going to tilt it around. Let it run wherever it wants to go. Okay. Yeah, it's still got some flowing, so we'll just leave it. We'll let it go on down here to the bottom here. And let's go ahead and take the orange one here. We'll we'll fill this top up here with orange. Let's let this one go right across the top here like this. Here again, like I say, you can tilt it any way you want to go with it. Let them cross over each other, make them curl over. After we get all our colors on here, if we have some open areas, then what we'll do after we dry it with our hair dryer, we'll take a brush and we'll take a, a contrasting color and we'll paint the whole thing so that it, uh, it'll it have uh, uh, all the holes filled up with it. And one there came right off the edge there. All right, so let me go offline real quick and we'll take and we will dry that and then we'll come back in and we'll start to put some colors in the middle here. I won't uh, I won't do the whole thing on the on the video cuz that takes too long to do it, but you're getting the idea how we're going to make this work. So I'll be back in a second. All right, we got these two colors all dried now. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll put this one here on here. Here again, shake it up real good. 
And I think we'll do this one here. Let's let's take it here, and we'll take it here, and we'll. Put it right there, and let's take it. Here again, we're just going to tilt it up and let it run around. If you want to, uh, you can take a, like a Q-tip here. Like right here. If you want to make this go all the way out the edge, just take and push it out here like that. Sometimes if you take the glass and just tap it, See how it makes it run down? So you get this kind of an effect right there. So it's kind of coming together for us a little bit. So let's take and put another color on here. Let's come over here with the, the Kelly green one right here. That one, the nozzle's plugged up on a little bit. We'll have to open that up. So we'll have to take, you can just open that up with just a little piece of wire. Just take a piece of wire and stick it in the in the uh, in the nozzle here. Open that up. Here again, we'll just take that one. Let it roll around. All right, that's good. Let it go here. All right. And we're going to stick one more on here real quick. Uh, let's come back here with take the blue one here. That was a little plugged up too. So here again, we'll take and take our wire and open that nozzle up a little bit. They dry out in the nozzle when you don't use them, you know, every day. So you may have to I'm just going to take and just run this wire inside of it here. There we go. So let's take and put the blue one right here. These little open areas you see right here, those are the ones we'll come in and we'll create a, uh, an accent color on those just to fill those hole, holes up. So you can see how it's kind of coming together here a little bit. By the way, when you fire this, these colors get brighter. So 
you know, don't be alarmed if you go like, well, they look pretty pale. Uh, they'll fire up a little bit darker than that. You know? So we'll go with that. All right, so let me go offline. I'll take and dry that. We'll come on. We'll add a couple more colors to it, and then I'll go offline and finish it up, and we'll come back. We'll show you the finished product. Okay, so our glass is starting to take uh, some form of a uh, uh, shape here with all the colors in it. Uh, so turn it over. You can see kind of what it's going to look like here a little bit. So uh, I'm going to add some more yellow across the top. I think I'm going to put a big band up here, uh, make sure that it's shook up good. I'll start way over here. And I'm going to just pick this up and let it run. All over like that. Let it come down a little bit. I'm going to just tap it just a little bit, let it come on down a little bit more. After you play with this for a while, you get an idea how to move it around. Since that's got quite a bit of yellow on there, I'm going to go offline real quick and dry that real quick uh, so that we don't get it uh, contaminated with the other colors. If you start to mix too many colors together while they're wet, uh, you start to get something that's kind of muddy looking. So we kind of want to keep some color definition between our colors. So uh, I'll uh, uh, drop offline real quick here and I'm going to dry that one. And then we'll come back and we'll put another color here. And then I'm going to go offline and uh, I'll put some more color to it. And then we'll come back and we'll finish it off and we'll show you uh, how it looks when it's all done. So we'll be back in a second here. All right, I'll come back on one more time and we'll add one more color here. I think we're going to put some blue across the top up here. So we're here again, we're going to shake it up real good. Start right here. Here again, this one wants to get plugged up. that blue one down around there. By tapping it down, it kind of makes it run down just a little bit further. Tap it on the corner, makes it make a turn. looking pretty good. I think I'm going to come right back in the top here, even though this is still wet here, and I'm going to add some purple right along the top here.
see my Q-tip right here. I'm going to plug these holes up a little bit. Just like that. come on down shows you how it looks on this side so when we get this all done and we get it fired and we cut this all up uh, you'll be surprised at the different uh, effects that we get from it so it's come along quite well I'm gonna go ahead and go offline now I'll go ahead and finish it up with some more some more colors in here and then when we're done uh, we'll go ahead and we'll fire it I'll show you how we put it in the kill and how we fire it and uh, from there uh, we'll go ahead and we'll uh, show you how to make a couple of pinwheels. All right, I'm back. I got it all done now. So you can see we've filled in all the colors now. So uh, now the next thing we'll do, we'll put it in the kiln and we'll fire this. We're going to fire this at about 1480 degrees. And that'll adhere it to the, uh, to the glass. And uh, they won't, uh, it'll never come off. It'll never cracks. And uh, it will give us a really interesting looking piece of glass. And from there, we're going to cut it all up into squares and we're going to cut up into triangles and we'll make our pinwheels with this. So I'm happy with how that came out. Like I said before, this is on a 2 mil uh, Code 96 glass. The base is on a 3 mil Code 96 glass. And uh, so when we come back, uh, we'll have this all fired up. We'll show you what it looks like. And then from there, we'll go ahead and uh, show you how we make at least one of these. And then we'll go offline and you guys can go over to the first uh, wind chime video and find out how to make the rest of the project. So I uh, hope you've been following along. This is fun to do and you can do anything you want to with this. You can brush it on, like I said, airbrush it. Uh, you can draw on it, whatever, whatever you're, you like to do. And uh, this just happens to be just a bunch of squiggles and it makes it really interesting when it's all cut up and put together. All right, we're here at the kiln. And uh, so anyway, we fired this last night. So uh, this is kind of like Christmas morning. We're going to open this up and we'll see how our project looks. So we just open it up. And uh, here's our painted glass in the area uh, in the kiln. So uh, came out real nice. We'll pull that out and take a look at it here in a minute. And uh, we'll get back and uh, show you exactly what we're going to do with this piece of glass. All right. So I've got the glass out now of the, of the kiln all together. Uh, it came out nice for us, so I'm happy with it. It's got a few little uh, scratches, or not scratches, but little check marks in it. Uh, don't worry about those for our project, because we're going to cut this all apart anyway. So uh, they'll kind of smooth over or close up when we fire it onto our base glass. So from here, I'm going to just go ahead and, and cut out a couple pinwheels. And uh, the pinwheels are basically a, a square cut on a 45, and they'll go point to point to go onto our glass. Uh, then what we're going to do is after I get them, I'll get them all put together. I'll show you how we're going to assemble them. And uh, then what we'll do is we'll put them back on the kiln shelf and we'll go ahead and we'll fire them for the final time. All right, well, we're back. We got uh, our uh, pinwheel here cut up now. Basically, that's a one and a half by one and a half square cut on a 45 to give us our, our pinwheel effect here. And our base glass here is three by three. Uh, so... Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to just take some regular uh, Elmer's white glue. And we'll take our first piece here. Just put a couple. Just put a couple dabs on it like that. And this one here is going to go right on here on point. Just like that. This one here will be the bottom one. Here again, we're going to just take this, put a couple of dabs of glue on here. Get this going the right direction here. And 
And you want these points right here in the middle to kind of come together. If they hang off the edge just a little bit, don't worry about it because when we fire it, that'll just roll over. Okay, and then we're going to take here again. Put this right here. We'll make all of the pine, uh, pinwheels just like this, doing the same exact thing. So uh, rather than run the video real long, we'll, we'll move away from that after we get this one done. But you can see now what's happened with our different colored glass now. So you can see that it's all gone all crazy on us, which is what we wanted. Kind of eyeball those so that you get them where you want them. Okay. Now I told you before we're going to put a little piece right in the center here. So I'm going to move this out of the way right here. This is our rod right here. This is a, a piece of glass here again. This is code 96. Uh, this is kind of a deep purple. It almost looks black. And to cut this, we're going to cut it in about uh, eighth inch high pieces here. And I found the best way to do it is to take a take an old cup, an old drink cup, and take your these are your nippers. Just line your nippers up right here, about an eighth of an inch down, and just take and squeeze this. And we can just go ahead and we can cut off. We just go ahead and cut this off here, about an eighth of an inch. You need to have something to catch these because if you don't, they'll go flying across the room. I won't do all of them, but here we'll bring them out here. So now here's the, this one here. This one here is just a little bit too small. We won't use that one. This is the size we're looking for right here. This one looks good. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take a pair of tweezers. Just like this, I'm going to take our, here again, our glue. I'm going to put a glue spot right in the middle here. And then, push these out of the way. Let's bring this back in here. Bring this back in here. And I'm going to take it, I'm going to put this right in the center here, just like this. Just like that. Okay, so we'll let this uh, uh, dry here. Usually it takes only about five or six minutes for it to dry. And then we'll be ready to put this in the kiln and we'll go ahead and we'll fire it. And uh, But uh, we'll do all the rest of them before because we'll fire them all at one time. Going to fire this about 1440 degrees. I think it'll give us a nice contrast uh, on our, on our uh, contour fuse. So you can see how the, all the different colors now change for what we had made on our sheet. So uh, this makes it come out really interesting. And for, obviously it'll be a one of a kind because you wouldn't be able to duplicate what we've done here by just rolling that paint around. So anyway, I'll be back later after I get them all done. We'll have them laid out here on the table. You can look at all of them and then we'll put them on our kiln shelf and we'll go ahead and we'll take and uh, we'll f fire them. And then, like I said before, we'll refer back to the other video on the uh, stained glass wind chime uh, for the assembly of the unit. So uh, we'll be back in a minute as soon as I get these all done. Actually, it won't be a minute because it takes quite a while to put all these on. And, uh, but we'll be back and uh, we'll show you how to finish this up. All right, well, I wanted to come back in here real quick and just show you a couple things. One, uh, here's, our, here's our small little pinwheels right here. And you can see they're quite small. These are only five-eighths of an inch square. And so we're going to cut these in half. So it makes it a little bit difficult. So uh, since we're making 16 of these, there's four of these little triangles on each one. That means we need 64 of these little guys. So I've got the squares cut up here. What I've done right here is I made a little jig out of two pieces of glass. 
and they create a 90 degree angle and then what I can do is I can reach around here with my cutter and just follow along this ruler cut it here and then I can just take and just take and snap them with my fingers to get our two perfect 45s that way uh, you don't have a whole bunch of different sizes I know this is kind of hard to show here but uh, I just wanted to kind of show you what we're doing here here again I'll do one more here and that's how we make the little triangles and then we'll put them on the uh, we'll put them on our piece of glass so uh, this is our base glass here so remember they'll go on here like this one will go here one goes here one will go on here like this and then one will go like this and that creates our that creates our pinwheel so as you can see from cutting up our glass uh, we have all these crazy colors now and uh, this is all the glass that we have left yet left is just this one little piece right here so uh, this, we started out with an eight by eight piece of two mil uh, glass and that's what we have left out of this particular project so I just wanted to show you this little uh, jig right here so it helps you to cut these at a uh, at a nice 45 so you don't have a bunch of different sizes so uh, we'll be back when we get this all together I'll show you all of the uh, uh, squares after we get get them uh, set up and put together I'll have them on the uh, the kiln shelf and uh, we'll get ready to fire them so we'll be back in a little while all right well we got all our pinwheels made now so I've got them on the uh, the shelf for the uh, for the firing for the kiln so anyway from here we'll go ahead and put them in the kiln we're going to fire them uh, I said earlier we're going to fire this at about 100, uh, 1440 degrees uh, I did a little trial fuse and uh, I'm going to go up to a 1465 on that so I wanted a little bit more uh, contour on the uh, on the product uh, so you can see they came out really nice so we're going to have some really interesting colors when we uh, get this all done so uh, we'll fire this uh, this evening and in the morning uh, we'll have it all done you notice they're placed on the kiln but they're not touching each other so you don't you don't want them to touch each other because they'll fuse together and then you'll have a kind of a mess on your hands so leave a little gap or a little space in between them and uh, then we'll go back and uh, and we'll get them off of here and we'll get ready to uh, to put them together so we'll be back in a second all right we got them out of the kiln now they're all fired so uh, as I said in the uh, earlier video there we were going to originally do this at uh, 1440 degrees I upped it to 1465 and I kind of went a little bit too high so if you notice the edges are kind of curved in a little bit so uh, that's all right it's kind of a surprise that'll kind of give us a little bit of a wonky look to the uh, to the wind chimes which is just fine it gives it some character so I'll go offline now and, uh, and get that all drilled up and put it together and when we come back on we'll have the finished product as I referred to several times you'll go back to the uh, stained glass wind chimes uh, for all the assembly of this unit so uh, we'll be back in a minute all right we've got the uh, project all done now so we have it out in the backyard we have it hung up we have it on a spinner right now so everybody can take a look at it I'll uh, take and blow this up a little bit so you can see the pretty colors on it uh, it came out real nice I hope you guys will give this one a try and uh, hope you'll subscribe to my channel if you have any uh, comments send them to me and I'll give you a reply let's blow this up a little bit here and you can see the colors on our pinwheels so we'll see you on the next video thank you for watching